it made it so much easier for us to empathize with each other because in the film we're playing cousins who have known each other their whole lives they're really really close and we had two days to kind of make that believable but I think what made it possible was that Cindy and I were just both really willing to do that and willing to be vulnerable with each other and willing to learn and it made it really easy to want to fight for her throughout the movie. Filmmaker Magazine presents Back to One with Peter Rinaldi. Talia Ryder is an actor. She gives a remarkable performance in her very first film. Eliza Hittman's Never, Rarely, Sometimes, Always, which you can see right now on demand, and I highly recommend you do so. Later on in the year, she'll be seen in Steven Spielberg's remake of West Side Story. She sat down with me in cyberspace to talk about the work. What I want to find out is why I woke up the next day after watching this movie and worried about these two girls as if they were real girls. I actually had a real worry. So I don't know why that is. There's a lot of great movies that I love. I didn't wake up the next day worrying about those people. But let's start with where were you in your life when you got that call for the for this audition. Did you already do a uh, West Side Story or was or is that after this? I when I first auditioned for Never Really Sometimes Always, I was kind of in the midst of callbacks for West Side. By this point I I wanted to be an actor. I had my agents at the time um send me out on stuff I really wanted to try and do movies because I had only done stage work before. And I had I had seen the audition. I didn't when you go in for something for the first time, you don't usually get the full script. I didn't and I was intrigued by the idea and I was kind of intrigued by the female driven story cuz you don't see a lot of those. And I went in and read and didn't hear for a while. Booked West Side and then this was what when was this? This was October. And then February we got another call saying that they wanted me to read again and then they sent me the full script and I got to understand what kind of story Eliza was telling. And what did that do for you? Were, were you scared about about the the gravity of this of this uh, material or were you excited? Well, I I mean I wasn't necessarily excited I guess because it it disappoints me that the that this story has to be made and has to be told. Yes. Yes. But at the same time, I I don't know, I f- I felt really proud that women like Eliza were telling it and telling it really really honestly because I think and kind of going back to what you said about um how you kind of worried about the girls after seeing the movie, they are they are real girls. I mean, in this specific set of set of circumstances, they're characters, but there's Autumns and Skylers everywhere. And that's I, that's why I really was intrigued by the story and felt really compelled to be a part of it. So you were saying, so having already been on Broadway, you had a, a conscious desire to actually try out for movies. Like it, it, it wasn't like you wanted to stay in the whole Broadway thing or theater thing. Is that right? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I was down to do whatever because I, I really I had a really great time on Matilda but once you get to like 15 16 it's kind of hard to work on Broadway because there's a lot more that goes into it like you need a guardian backstage with you at all times you need to be mm. tutored the hours so I just wasn't seeing a ton of auditions and opportunities coming my way so I was just kind of like well I had a lot of fun I kind of want to keep doing this if I can and so so here here's the other thing that I you know, you might not be the right person to talk to about this because I don't know if you could be objective about about this. But I'm kind of shocked at the level of of subtlety in your performance, which is which is what I I need as an audience member in a story like this. You were able to give that after having never been in a movie and coming from Broadway, where you're you have to get to the back of the audience. <laughs> You know what I mean? Even though you got a mic on or whatever, you know what I mean? You're you're in the big you're in the big kind of performance um um headspace 
for you, for your first movie to be this kind of subtle thing, did Eliza maybe direct you toward that or, or, or did you just have an instinct toward it? Um, well, I mean, it was a little bit of both, but Eliza really, really helped me feel comfortable and just what, I mean, what she did in rehearsals, we had, we only had two days to kind of rehearse. It was a really, um, we were tight on time, but, um, she really focused on building a bond between Sydney and I, rather than diving too much into backstory or creating a bond between our characters. She wanted us to feel comfortable as people with each other and as young women, And I think, I don't think the movie would have been the same without that approach because so much of the film is silent and unspoken moments between me and Sydney. So that I think really helped. And she had us, when when we rehearsed it, when we started to do lines and go through the script, she had us do things like we would be doing each other's makeup and hair and kind of not it, it wasn't to distract us but it was kind of it, it made us feel comfortable with what we were saying and didn't put too much weight on the words it was it was just more about feeling and acting off of that rather than like thinking about dialogue too much which i thought was really interesting Ooh, yes and i mean I, I don't have anything else to compare it to but i i feel like that's the best way to understand a character and kind of go at a roll. Well, before we talk about the rehearsal, let's talk about the audition because I found it so fascinating when I heard that she had you guys audition in the bathroom and also walking outside, places that you were eventually going to film in. And I thought that was so fascinating. Did, did that help you in the audition process to be in the actual environments? Oh my God, a hundred percent. I, I, that was the, the final audition, I guess you could say. I, I was like totally expecting to be in like a fluorescent lit room with like a bunch of producers and like awkwardly, like trying to make small talk with Sydney or whoever was going to play. Yeah. Them. But yeah. it was totally the opposite. Like Eliza, like gave Sydney and I a minute to just talk and we just kind of instantly like vibed with each other we were both from buffalo and then she told us that i mean after we talked i had some questions about the script we just kind of talked through things she was like we're gonna kind of go out into the real world if that's cool and i was like thank god like that that's like that's that's how you're gonna get like the best performance i feel like from anyone one of the actors i talked to uh uh, wyatt russell he, he went he told a really long story about how uh he was talking to a director and, and he told the director, I hate these kind of auditions where I can't do it. Like, he's like, if this scene has a, has a bucket, I, I want to have my hands on a bucket. And then he got a call back and the director had the bucket there for him. And he, that little, that did everything for him. He, he, he picked up the bucket in real life and everything. That's why I love that story that, that she was telling. And that, that's why we have this movie. If that kind of person thought of that, and puts you right in there, and we can see the she could see the best that you can do in that situation. Then that's why we have this great moments in this actual movie. I feel like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, when you were telling the story about the bucket, there's um, a scene that Sydney and I do where she's throwing up in the bathroom, and I'm kind of looking through the cracks of the stall, trying to figure out what's going on with her. And we we read that script in the hallway for the first time, like before we went into the bathroom and did it. And I did it and I was like, oh, like, it's like, I don't know, like, you, you you just do a scene and you're like, that's not how I wanted it to come out. I don't know, like, what else do I need to do? And Eliza put us in the bathroom and just having that physical barrier of the bathroom stall completely shifted it, which mm. if, if I were to ever direct a movie or do something on the other side of the table, I guess, I would definitely take the same approach as Eliza. Yes, yes. And I know I heard you say a couple of times that you would like to do that and that uh, it, it, you want to direct. That's so cool. Your foundation in film is so good with 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 Eliza. And I hope you stick with these kind of good people that it's going it, to it feed you so well. It's literally like good food <laughs> that you're taking in. I mean, she's know? she's a professor, too. But even just being on set with her and getting to ask her questions and understand what all the moving pieces were. And, and same with West Side Story, too. I just doing these two films, I got to learn so much. I mean, being on sets, like learning another language, but 
it's fascinating to me. Yeah, that's a good analogy. It really is. Yeah. Uh, so wait, let, let's so let's go to the to rehearse the rehearsal now with those two days, and and um, the journaling that she asked you to do, I found re- really fascinating. A lot of a- actors uh, have told me that they actually just take it upon themselves to start journaling as the character, but she, you know, and I think this was smart. It seemed like she wanted you guys to pull from yourselves so there, you know it's kind of like there's not enough time and you guys are young you know so so you're you're ha- having you journal giving you a couple prompts i guess it was and having you uh write stuff very personal stuff and then letting each other read it is that what it was yeah she yeah, there were i think three or so prompts and she had us each show up um an hour early to our scheduled rehearsal and we just spent that time going through them and they were kind of loaded questions, I guess. And those led to other conversations. And I, I think that's the fastest ever in my life that I've gotten to know someone. It was it was really cool, actually. What was it that you felt, if you can tell me, that happened through those things when you actually were on the set, when you actually were being filmed? Well, it just it made the process so much easier, in my opinion. Because this was before we started working on scenes, before we started going through the script and getting our questions out. We just, like, we knew such big events in each other's lives, and we had surprisingly a good amount of parallels with each other. It made it so much easier for us to empathize with each other because in the film, we're playing cousins who have known each other their whole lives, they're really, really close. And we had two days to kind of make that believable. But I think what made it possible was that Cindy and I were just both really willing to do that and willing to be vulnerable with each other and willing to learn. And it made it really easy to want to fight for her throughout the movie. Yes. I can feel that in the movie from you. Thank you. You know, I really can. Now, you have to help me with something that I do not... The only thing I don't like about this movie, which I'm hoping you can you can correct. Wait, is it a suitcase? Yes, it is. <laughs> How did you know? And Q&As, that's kind of the go-to. From the audience, and understandably so. Okay, tell me. Talk to me. Okay. So, obviously, for metaphoric purposes, the girls are carrying a lot of baggage. You see that in the suitcase. Yes. But in a more literal sense, Eliza had done a lot of research on young women that travel to different places to get an abortion. And one of the things that she learned was that women often severely overpack and they kind of go into it with the expectation that they're going to make a trip out of it and get to do other things and are trying to make a positive of the situation. And obviously we didn't really get to do any of that. So it kind of serves two purposes in that sense well you have just done what i hoped you would do i now love it hearing that really like solidify because i need in a movie like this i I don't i want i want to i want metaphors but i want them also to make sense in reality you know what i mean so so that's what it did and i and i knew there was something because i heard you say that the suitcase was even there in the audition yeah, we understood right? the suitcase too, yeah. When I heard that, I was like, all right, I have to ask her now because that means something. Now, I'm from Pennsylvania and and the the most horrific scene for me was when you guys pulled up the Marts um, um, Trailways bus schedule. That's how much I hate the bus from Pennsylvania to Port Authority. I can't even stand the website on the screen. But anyway, Port Authority has to be one of my top three least favorite places in New York City. No, I'd have to Tell- agree. <laughs> and you had to be there at the worst hours imaginable shooting this movie. But but I heard you say somewhere that that actually help, helped being there and, and kind of being wide-eyed in a way by everything going on. But tell me about that a little bit. So to shoot in Port Authority at a time where it was empty, because we obviously couldn't shoot when there were a ton of passengers waiting for their buses, we had to shoot from 12 a.m. to 4 a.m., which was interesting. But like I I, I said in a couple interviews, I think, it kind of being 
delirious and overly tired, I think definitely heightened some of the high stakes scenes we had to do there. And it, it, it was interesting. Like people were very uh, like no bullshit when we were filming there. There was not a lot of wasted time. Everyone was focused. And it was cool. Being that this is your first movie, I guess maybe this this wouldn't matter. But the idea that this is on film and you know that they have to reload the film. See, I, I grew up, I went to film school and I didn't even touch video until I got out of film school. So I was always on film. And now I can't even imagine loading a film camera and shooting on film and what it would do to the actors knowing that like, wow, we're wasting film. Did you think about that at all? Was that something that, that she kept on herself and didn't even put on you guys? Well, I mean, I didn't realize going into it that it was unusual to shoot on film because I had never done something like that before. But I started to hear like some of the ADs being, like making remarks like that it was tougher doing it this way and a lot of stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh, wait, everything is done digitally. Like I, I didn't even realize that sometimes when there would be a bad gate, that would be really tough. You'd have to go back and redo it, which I, uh, that we, we would, we would hold our breaths. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. That's like the old days. That's why people don't realize check the gate what that, what that even means. So on your first movie, you got, you got, they are actually checking the gate. Sometimes they still say it, even though they don't have to on digital stuff. <laughs> if, if anybody's listening and they don't know that, that's when the a hair or something is in the, is in the frame and, and the hair is going to be gigantic because the, the thing is so small. So you might've had a couple good takes there with a giant hair. <laughs> it didn't happen too often, but it, it was, it was more of a joke that we would like hold our, hold our breath and we were waiting. Like. <laughs> this young man who you play opposite of Theodore working opposite him and 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 anybody else that has uh more experience in in movies what were you pulling from these people were these people nice to you in a, in a way i mean i know sydney's sydney also is, wasn't in a movie yet, so you can't you can't necessarily <laughs> take take knowledge from from her you guys are kind of in the same boat which is probably a good a good thing but with the other actors that had movie experience did you gather anything from them or were they were they willing to share stuff with you like in that way yeah i mean i learned there's a scene that theo and i do on the bus where we kind of have our first interaction he his character is um kind of flirting with mine and that was one of the most uh like dialogue heavy scenes i guess i do in the film and that was that was the first day I had met him and worked with him. And I just remember doing the scene with him being like, oh my God, like he's, he's so great. Like every time we did the scene, there would be something that I hadn't thought of that like came up and he would try different things and add in some improv and like, you you could just tell like, oh, like he's like, he's an actor. And it, it was, it was really cool getting to do that scene with him. And were you guys just shooting in the subway? Things were like, it wasn't like a closed set. Were you just taking shots in the subway? Is that, is that right? Yeah, we were. There's a rule in New York City, if I'm correct, that you, it's, it's completely legal to shoot stuff on the subways and in like MTA terminals, I guess, as long as you don't set the camera down, as long as there's no tripod or anything. So everything... Right. On the train, we had to do handheld. And people watching you and looking at you and stuff was just, was this just added extra pressure on you? I mean, yes, yes and no. Be I mean, it helped keep the scene feeling real. And it, it like, there was no need to like mentally like create an environment for your character to be in. It was just kind of there, which was really helpful. But also like, it, I guess it was kind of funny because New York City, as populated as a city it is, it's really small. I like ran into some friends sometimes while I would be like filming, and that that was kind of weird. But no, I think it, it it was cool being in like a real place shooting. Did you just come off uh, online school today? Yeah, I had to do some so, so class today. You're a senior, and and it it looks like you're probably not going to be able to go back to school high school is this right we got the email yesterday yeah this is terrible and what about graduation you're not even going to be able to have a graduation i don't know i i hope we have a real graduation i i really hope 
does, does, do things like this matter to you? Like, or like for me, if this happened to me and my, when I was your age, I'd be ecstatic because I hated everybody and hated school. <laughs> so I, the idea of not having that, I wouldn't care at all. Like, but is, but is that, is this different for you? Is this a real, real true bummer? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously bummed, but at the same time, I really, I can't complain because I, I'm really fortunate to be in good health and to be in like a safe home at this time. But at the same time, I, I did have really great friends at school that, um, I'm going to miss getting to experience those things with, but I mean, we also live in a time where we can FaceTime and text all the time. So it's, it's, what are you going to (laughs) do? Let's look at. Of uh, uh, some bright things coming up. One of them is, of course, West Side Story coming out this year. That's in December. Let's hope the world is coming back by then. Now that you've, with these two films, you've been bitten by the film bug, do you want to keep going looking for film work or are you also now missing the stage and want to do stage work? You know, I, I don't really care um, what medium, I guess, it's in. What really drives me want to want to do stuff is the script and the story. Um, I, after doing West Side Story, never really sometimes all the way through stories that kind of have messages bigger than just the film itself. Getting to be a part of something like that is a really educational and powerful experience. And that's kind of the work I want to keep doing. Well, I'm really excited about your future. I'm excited about what you're going to do. Legitimately excited. Tell your writer, thank you. I really appreciate you having me. Back to One is a production of Filmmaker Magazine, which is a publication of IFP, the Independent Filmmaker Project. Listen to back episodes of this podcast at filmmakermagazine.com or wherever you get your podcasts.